So once again, good evening, everyone. Uh, we hope as we proceed, others we join us. So once again, this is a mind class soft skills masterclass for students. And uh, my name is Abiola Sonia Okisi, a soft skill instructor at uh, mind class. Today we are talking about relationship intelligence. And we trust and hope that this course is going to enlighten a great number of our students to be intelligent in the way they relate with people, the young, the old, and the elderly. As an introduction, we are looking at the life of this man named Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius happens to be uh, an age-long uh, Roman emperor. When he was living, it was said that he assigned, he appointed an assistant because of the position he was occupying then as an emperor. That whenever he's praised, whenever a people get to kneel down to express their respect to him, to ensure that pride does not you know, take over all of him so that he doesn't become a prideful. So when he employed his assistant that whenever he is praised to whisper in his ear, you're just a man, you're just a man. And that is how Marcus Aurelius was managing himself and his relationship with people in a bid to ensure that he becomes more intelligent in his relationship, in a bid to ensure that he does not ox others, to ensure that pride does not take over of him and in his relationship with those that he was leading them. And that's why we are looking at the topic today, relationship intelligence. By the end of this course, we hope that students will understand what is relationship intelligence. We trust that students will understand the types of relationship. And thirdly, we trust that students will understand why they need to learn to be intelligent in their relationship. We trust that students will know the keys on how to benefit from relationship. And lastly, we trust that by the end of today's class, students will be more intelligent in their relationship. Now, what is relationship? Before we go into what relationship intelligence is, relationship intelligence is the exchange of communication, action, and thoughts that leads to growth in one's life and with, and I mean, among people. Now, they, they, this definition implies that the essence of relationship is number one, to lead to growth in one's life as a student, as a person. So the essence of relationship is to help you as a student to grow in your career, to grow in your education, to grow to know yourself better, to grow to uh, develop in your relationship with people, to understand people better. So the number one access of relationship is to help you to become better. That's why when you give it to a child, or when you are very young as a young person, you discover that the att attention is drawn towards you to ensure that you grow, you get the right nutrients, you are breastfed, to ensure that you are healthy, sound, and okay. So it is to help you as a person to become better. And secondly, is to help you in a way is to, you know, help your relationship with others to become better also. So the second aspect of relationship is to promote healthy relationship with others. So that's why it is said, and with, among people. So to grow in your relationship with, with others. So there's a, there's a little error there. So that is what relationship is. So your relationship with your family, relationship with friends, relationship with acutans, acutances. So that is the essence of relationship. What is intelligence? Intelligence is the ability to use an important knowledge profitably. For example, when you uh, look at the popular um, writing at the back of the cigarette pack, it's usually reads that smokers are liable to die young. 
So it means here that those who are intelligent in, most, um, in their relationship, we understand that by the time they read this, you know, when you use that knowledge, well, when you ensure that you don't indulge in smoking because it is already there, as smokers are liable to die young. So such person are regarded as people who are, in, who are intelligent when they use knowledge profitably. Another saying is that, you know, use of note marks can help to reduce the effect and the, the transfer of COVID-19. So when you yield to the use of note marks, it means that you are an intelligent person. So the application of knowledge to make yourself better, it can be financial knowledge, it can be emotional knowledge, it can be knowledge as regarding anything. It is what can be referred to as what makes one intelligent. Another example is the man Ben Carson who happened to separate, who happened to be the first person who separated the joint twins. So this man can be regarded as someone who is intelligent because he has a knowledge on, he has medical knowledge. And his knowledge medically, when it was applied to the twins that were joined together, it brought to result because he was able to separate them successfully. So when you have the knowledge about something and you apply it well, that is when we can see that you are intelligent. Now, what is relationship intelligence? It means that it is the ability to use one's behavior, your thoughts, your action for the growth of yourself and that of others. So every knowledge that you have that does not help you as a person to grow is not a good knowledge. So it's, it is, it, it's, it first, don't forget that knowledge should help you. Relationship intelligence means that as you relate with people, with family and friends, as you relate with young and the old, as you relate to people around you, it is expected that you grow in your relationship. So it has to do with your thoughts, your actions, your thinking, which should help you to grow, help you to become better. So in your academics, in your class, when you, are, when you have relationship intelligence, it is expected to help you as you relate with the best in your class, even if you are not a very good student. Or if you are the best, as you relate with those who are struggling, as you help them to become better, it means you are intelligent with regard to relationship. So, and we said that in a group, so in a class, if you are possibly, you are the class governor or you are the class prefects, when you help those who are struggling, when you encourage those who are having issues in one area or the other, it means you have relationship intelligence. And don't forget the first aspect is yourself, how you think, how you reason. So are you always thinking negative about yourself? Are you always saying or thinking that you cannot do it? Or do, are you among those who are always saying that math is hard? You can't know the you know, calculation and the likes. It means you don't have a good relationship with yourself. So relationship is not just what you have with others. It starts with you. It starts with your relationship with yourself. How you think about yourself. Many students are, you know, doing poorly today. Is the major reason is because of their poor thinking about themselves. They always think about, you know, themselves in a low way. The thing that they are failures, the thing that they can't do better than others. So because of this, it forms the foundation of their life and they are unable to do better. Don't forget the first aspect of relationship is how you think, how you act about yourself and also in your group. This is very important. Now, we'll go to the next point, which is the second definition that we are looking at. It says here that relationship intelligence means when you are able to communicate, uh, communicate, when you are able to think, when you are able to act in a way that helps you to become better and also those around you. So when you are able to communicate with yourself, like I said recently, now there's a young student who was struggling with passing jam. He, the first jam he wrote, he had over 200 and there was no support to help him to gain admission there. So that score uh, was left. So the other jam examination that he was writing, 
he was doing poorly. He had 150, 120, and this young man was very sad. He was not happy. And a couple of years ago, I think around 2019 or thereabouts, because of you know lack of money, was not also doing well. Someone offered to help him on social media, I think on Twitter. And the person said, the person offered to sponsor him if he happened to pass his damn examination. And he wrote the examination, even when someone promised to help him financially, but he couldn't make 200, uh, the cut off mark then. But the point here is that after some time, this young man actually, you know, believed that he couldn't do well. He believed that even if he does not pass down, that it wouldn't amount to anything in life. He assumed in his mind that he's a failure because he couldn't pass down. He assumed that he wouldn't become anything in life. And because of that, this young man committed suicide. So it was the thinking, the acting, his relationship with himself made him an unintelligent person. So he used his communication with himself, his thinking of himself, the way he acts to himself, he used it in a negative way. So it is not the poor performance in his academics that actually made him committed suicide. It was actually his poor communication to himself, his poor thinking of himself, his poor way of acting to himself made him do it. So number one is how you think, how you act about yourself, which forms the foundation of your life. If you're thinking about yourself, it's low, it's poor. If you're always thinking, I can't do it, I can't move forward. If you're always thinking that you can't know mathematics, you can't understand physics, you think that science is very hard. The point and the truth is that it will be hard because what you say forms what becomes of you. So it has to start with you first. Then the second aspect is your relationship with others. It is very important. It is often say that who you have goes a long way in determining the friends around you and the friends around you goes a long way in determining who you have. So if you have bad friends, if you have friends who influence you negatively, it's always going to tell in your results, in your performance, it's going to tell in your academics. It's going to tell in the future you are trying to build for yourself. And that's one way when you see lions, lions walk with lions. In the same way, cheetahs, elephants, they walk together. So your thinking in groups will determine if you will be intelligent as regarding relationships. So what are the type of relationships that we have? Number one is familial relationship, which is also called relationship with your family, relationship with you, with, between you and mom, and that relationship that you have with your elderly ones and the same family. And the second is friendship relationship. This is the relationship that occurs among friends. The next one is professional relationship. This is the relationship that you have in school and the workplace and uh, that you have among you know, it is also called a formal relationship. Then the fourth one is a romantic relationship. This is the relationship that occurs between mom and dad, between husband and wife. Then the other aspect of relationship is the acquaintance relationship. No. People is on your you meet and see but once I, in a while. So this, is, this is the relationship that occurs uh, that you have with people that you scarcely know, people that you see once in a while. And the uh, one that is the last that we are actually looking at today is, uh, is that relationship that you have with yourself. And it is very, very important. Why should a student learn? Why should a student be interested in developing relationship intelligence? Number one is who you are is partly determined by the friends that you have. And that's why as a young student, you need to choose your friends intelligently. It is my friend who helped me to become a graduate today. It was my friend that inspired me to become better today. As a person, the friends that I linked up with when I got to the higher institution influenced me to become you know, one of the best students in school. It was my friends who, when I uh, had issue in my academics back then in school, that inspired me, motivated me. 
that linked me up to become better with who could be of help that trained me. So who you are, who you are goes a long way in determining the friends around you. Number two reason why students should learn relationship intelligence is that it can take you up and throw anyone down. You must have read about the, the, the students who actually, you know, uh, who was alleged to have a murdered Sylvester Romani. So who you are, don't forget that the, 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 your, your level of intelligence in relationship goes a long way in determining your future. It goes a long way in determining if you will live long or not live long. So when you have relationship intelligence, you are able to understand that these people that are always coming to approach me, these people are always coming to bully me. If I don't act fast, if I don't do something urgent, they are actually going to terminate my life. So as a student, you need to have relationship intelligence. We'll be looking at a young man at the end of today's course who was also, who was also a mother as a result of friends, as a result of close friends, for that, for, for God's sake. So it can, you know, terminate someone's life. So another point here is that the challenges you have can be solved by relationship intelligence. So as a student, if you are struggling academically, if you have relationship intelligence, if you are having challenges as concerning the passing jam, or you have one issue in all one area or the, or the other, relationship intelligence can help you. If you need something from mommy or daddy and you have not been able to get it, relationship intelligence can help you to get it. If you are having issue with relating well with people, relationship intelligence can help you. If mommy and daddy have been saying you can't get this or they can't buy this for you, if you have intelligence on how to get something from, if you have relationship intelligence, you can get almost anything you have or anything you desire from mom or from dad. So relationship intelligence also can determine one's success in life. I read about the story of uh, the world, uh, uh, one of the best footballer in the world who is known as Cyril Ronaldo. It was said that it was one of his friends several years ago that gave him the privilege to be chosen by a club who came to choose the best on the field. So that friend of Cyril Ronaldo could have been chosen, but he decided to allow Cyril Ronaldo to be chosen above himself. And today, Cyril Ronaldo is the best in the world, or one of the best, and is also giving back to that his friend who gave him that opportunity. So it can determine, it can be, it can determine one's success in life. Also, relationship intelligence can be used to meet special or urgent needs. If you are in a challenge, if you are having issue, if you are lacking in one way or the other, when you have relationship intelligence, it can help you to meet your needs or you need your skill. If you have relationship intelligence, it can help you to meet your urgent needs. Another point here is that emotional intelligence, well-being. So when you are intelligent emotionally, so your emotional intelligence depends on the fact that whether you have relationship intelligence or not. Another point is that the progress of our country depends on it. Relationship intelligence is beyond what we'll be looking at today. It has to do with group growth. It has to do with helping others. It has to do with empathy. It has to do with sympathy. It has to do with encouraging others to become better. So it goes beyond what we'll be looking at today. So the question then is that how can a young student improve his or her relationship skills? Number one is to learn to give. Don't always, you know, be on the receiving hand. Give to mom, give to dad, give to friends who are in need. Because what you give today, in one way or the other, comes and can come to you tomorrow. When you have today, there's a possibility that he or she who has today may not have tomorrow. And the person that you have been privileged to give yesterday can in turn give today. Like I said, see Ronaldo as a friend who gave them who gave him the privilege to become one of the best today. And see Ronaldo in return is giving back. 
So that is friend who gives to him. So, so have this relationship with telling to promote your relationship with others. You need to learn to give. If you are not being given as a young student, I want to encourage you today, learn to give. Don't just, it, you don't only give money. You don't only give food. You can give your time. You can give encouragement. You can give things that are not really, you know, in cash. You can give in kind. Another point here is that do not be a parasite. Don't always be on the getting side. You always want to get this, get that, get this. So people don't like those who are like parasites, who always want to get from others, who always like to lean on others. So it is important that you be on the giving side more than the getting side. Another point is that you need to respect the old and the young, respect the elderly. For the fact that someone is older or younger than you, it doesn't mean you should not respect as a young person. So as a young man or as an elderly person, you need to respect those who are your teachers, who are younger than you, who are elderly, because they can always be of help to you in one way or the other. So learn to respect. This is one of the key to relationship intelligence. Another point is to improve the level of your integrity and be humble, like we learned about Marcus Aurelius, who hired an assistant that whenever he's praised, that assistant should whisper in his ear, you're just a man, you're just a man. So if you have not been humble, if you have not been you know, living with integrity with others, this is one of the skills that can help you to improve your relationship with others. So those who have integrity are highly respected. Those who are humble attract people, they attract attention, they, they get you know, respect from others because of their humility. Another point is to understand people's behavior. The friends around you understand those who have envy, those who are jealous. You need to be very careful when you are relating with friends who are in jealousy. You know, one of the reasons why, why uh, Sylvester Romoli was murdered, as he was alleged to have been murdered, could be because of envy, it could be because of jealousy. It could be because possibly his parents are rich and um, others are jealous of him. So there are some students, there are some people that are jealous. So you need to understand people's behavior and you don't always tell about your life. You don't tell about your family. You don't tell about mommy and daddy to everybody. So you don't pour out the secrets of your family. You don't pour out the secrets of mommy, your dad. You don't pour it out to strangers. So this is one of the ways to stay intelligent in relationship. Don't follow strangers. Don't, you know, don't say yes to strangers. Don't give strangers, you know, your words. This is very important. People have been kidnapped because of this. Another point is to love Paul, but don't trust Paul. Don't, tr don't trust uncle. Don't trust auntie. Don't trust... Almost anybody. The only person you should trust is mom and dad and your siblings. So love must be for all. But trust is not for all. Because trust is hand. It is in the way you have relate, in the way you have related with people, the way you have communicated with people that should help you to know who you can trust or not. So you love, but in the way you love people, there is a boundary. You don't pour out all of yourself to people. You don't visit strangers because, you know, because of the lack of security issues today. So love all, but don't trust all. Number seven is to make yourself very, very valuable. One of the ways to attract good and best friends today is to be valuable. You have to read omnivorously, like Ben Carson. One of the reasons why he, you know, got the attention of all. One of the reasons why he, you know, decided to compete in the presidential, you know, presidential seats a couple of years ago was because he is a man who is very, very valuable. So he's a man who has developed himself, he's a man who is a reader, he's a man who is a successful doctor. So all these are values that you as a young student need to improve yourself upon, who need, you need to develop yourself in to make yourself more valuable because people expect value. Value is like gold. It's like diamond. To get it, it requires a lot of effort. It requires a lot of sweat. It requires a lot. 
And to get gold and diamond, you know, people will have to pay exorbitantly to get them. So you be gold, don't be wood, don't be sand, don't be, don't, don't, don't be, don't, don't be hay, don't be like clay. So be a diamond, be a gold. One of the ways to do that is that you need to develop yourself. You need to read more. You need to become the best. You need to become best in mathematics and physics. You need to think more intelligently. You need to improve yourself in the way you think of yourself. You need to understand that you can become the best. You can become more successful. You can become better than you were the previous time. So as a student, you need to improve in this area. Number eight is that you need to learn to say thank you. Say thank you to mommy when you get something small. When you get a gift from them, say thank you. To daddy, when you get big gift, say thank you. When you get small, don't forget to say thank you. Always learn to say thank you. To teachers, say thank you to the young. Say thank you to the old. Don't always be a fault finder. There are some students who are possibly doing better than yourself in your class. Always learn. So praise them. Always learn to appreciate, appreciate their efforts. Don't just always find faults in error. Always learn to appreciate, to praise others. These are ways to improve your relationship skills. Number nine, as an hero here, number nine is reach out to others first. So always learn to you know, encourage others. Always learn to greet as a person. So you don't always greet someone who is older than you. You can also greet someone who is younger than you. You can you know, reach out to others first. Number 10, which is the last one, is to end relationship peacefully. When you see that the friends that you keep are negative friends, if you see that you are, if you see that they are not contributing to your life positively, if you see that they are always envious and jealous, you need to talk to mommy, you need to talk to daddy. You need to see their counsel on how to end such relationship or possibly speak to that your friend, speak to that your colleague, or you have to possibly speak to teacher, the teacher, that is the problem or challenge that you are having with X, Y, Z, in a bit to help such person to become better. So as a young student, if a relationship, you found that a relationship is possibly going to be, you know, negative to you, it's going to take away from you, always learn to hand peacefully. You can call the person and encourage, you can call the person and say, if the person does not improve in this area or that area, that you might have to, you know, separate from such person. Because this is your life. Your life is very important. That way, the person can learn to become better. The person can be inspired to become, you know, more better in order to keep that relationship. As we conclude today, we are looking at the story of this young man who is Emmanuel Balogun. He was a 17-year-old boy as at 2019, and something happened. It was reported that a, a 17 year old first student of Juni Abuja, you know, was watched to drown in a pool by his close friend at an hotel where they were celebrating a fresh art party at the University of Abuja. But the point here is that this young man could have noticed some things in the life of his friend. He could have noticed envy. He could have noticed jealousy. He could have noticed some things that he you know, was not intelligent enough to understand that these friends are negative. These friends you know, can murder me. So this young man was left to drown in a pool. That's why we said that you should be intelligent enough as a young student to end negative relationship wisely. Your life matter to us. Your life matter to mommy. Your life matter to daddy. Your life is very important for the world because you have a gift, you have a vision, you have a passion to deliver, to make this world a better place. And that's why you need to live for us. So Emmanuel Balogun died because partly it could be because of lack of relationship intelligence. His friend also lacked in the relationship intelligence because a friend says that he was doing, he was being prideful. His friends assumed that he, all the girls in the school were, you know, rallying around him. And because of that, 
they watch him die and approve when they could have saved him. Even despite the fact that he paid for the entry, you know, to the hotel for the party celebration. And uh, Emmanuel Balogun died in the year 2019. The, question, the discussion that we want to have this evening in the next few minutes, we have less than 10 minutes to round up to this class. The discussion we'll be having is that how do you think relationship intelligence could have helped Emmanuel Balogun Balogun escaped the death trap of his friends. Is anyone who would like to speak? If you want to speak, kindly uh, identify so that you can have the floor. Anybody? Good evening. Good evening. Welcome. Man. I think Emmanuel will have escaped this. Uh, the dead trap if he's intelligent enough to discover that the kind of friend he has are uh, envious and they don't like him as expected. They are thinking that they are, they think they don't have, maybe because the guy is very, very handsome and they think, oh, girls are rallying around, around him. And so that make him his friends see him as being superior to them, and so they want him dead. If he's in to watch the kind of friends, you know, there are some friends that when you dress well, they, they can't tell you how you look good. Rather, they will be looking at you and say, oh, what's wrong with this? So there are, there are ways he could have escaped. But if you look at his age too, he was just 17, and probably he was among people that are 20, 22, being an undergraduate. And maybe that's, it was in year one. Time is coming out of the house, mingle with people that are older than him. And really, the time was short. It was just, I think the, it was their matriculation party that he went for yes, after yes. party that led to his death. So I don't think he really has much time talk about a uh, relation okay you can't get maybe you've been seeing your oh no next time or you've been staying in the hostel you might not really you know if this is the first time you are the first child that is the first time you Oh, I, 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 the place of God, the place of prayer. That yes, absolutely. Things, there are places that you not even go. There are places you will not even go. I'm yes. sure the, the part doesn't happen. It didn't happen in the afternoon. It yes. didn't happen where the lecturers are. It happened where, ordinarily, if, if a child has the Holy Spirit, that will have been something that will say, don't go. Or why you are going, you are going with a friend. And all the same, if, you're, if you know God as a child, your friend will definitely be given to you, be choice by God to you. Not be there. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you. Thank you for the contribution. Is there any person who would like to speak? Any other person? How do you think relationship intelligence could have helped Emmanuel leave or escape the death trap? Anybody? Anybody? We have less than four minutes. So, in the absence of any further contribution. Mr. Emmanuel, would you like to speak? Okay. Yes. Can you okay. can, can everybody hear me? We can hear you. You have less than 30 minutes. Okay, okay. Uh, it's just it's very short. So it's also a call to parents like that um, we should uh, teach our just um, tell them about 
not be able to go through by again to invest the boys. At least if they have completed some value into it. The network is bad. We can hardly, I can hardly hear you, Mr. Imano. Okay, can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yes, I said the parents to parents should um, try to instill values into their words. If the parents are probably instill the right value, I'm not saying the parents are instilled the right value. But if the parents are instilled the right value, the the boys like what might have to say. Very, very important contribution. Parents should learn to keep in touch with their uh, children. We have few minutes to round up today's class. So I want to also enjoy us that one of the important points in relationship intelligence is, you know, children, parents, communication. This is very important. I remember one of the uh, jam novel that was read, I think around 2020. And the book talk about a young girl who has a very cordial and good relationship with her dad. So the book is a, is a fictional book, but it has a lot of message to pass across to a young student and parent. So this young girl happens to be a very you know, brilliant girl who does not hide anything from her father. And because of that, virtually nothing happens to her in shock. And she and, and, and her dad happens to be her best friend. So there's no man who is coming, there is no adult who is coming into her life that you know that she would not inform, that she would not you know inform about her father about. So there's no decision, there's no step that she's taking that she will not carry her father along. So as a parent, we should learn to make our children. Uh, our best friend. I met a woman who happens to be the former principal of a secondary school a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, a couple of years ago, rather. This woman told me that her daughter was, you know, being a bully in the, 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 the boarding school that she was in, that it was because of her closeness to her daughter that made her daughter open up to her, that, mom, if you don't take me out of this school, something worse. You know, could happen. And before the, the, the mom, because of her experience as a counselor, as the principal of a very big public school in Lagos, she had to respond strictly to see to the security of her daughter. And because of that, she withdrew her daughter from the school into a better school where she could actually you know, look after her well being. As a parent, let's endure, let's ensure that we work on you know promoting ld and mutual relationship between our children thank you all for today we appreciate your contribution uh, uh mr james said he would like to speak he would have loved to speak but he's in a bus we appreciate your comments and uh, much more importantly let's not forget tomorrow is another day and we'll be talking about something which is very important which is leadership I want to believe that there's no one who has any question. Either, or does anyone ask a question before we close for tonight? Anybody? Any question generally about what we have discussed or about my class? Any question? In the absence of question, we'd like to say thank you all for joining and have a splendid night rest. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And bye. Thank you for your time. Thank you.